What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Thank you for watching. Really quick before we get started today, I have some very exciting news for you guys. Yesterday morning, I finally ordered a 50 BMG and it's one that doesn't have like a two year wait time. So it should be here in a couple weeks and I could not be any more excited. But in the meantime, we have some really fun stuff that we're gonna do. So on the channel, we've obviously shot pretty much anything you can think of. I would say the two most impressive things that we've shot in terms of stopping bullets are sandbags and railroad ties. Now, of course, railroad ties are very big and cumbersome and you know, not as easy to move around. But today we're gonna compare a couple smaller, lighter weight portable reinforcements that you could use to stack up and fortify a bunker or a gunfight zone. So first up, we have the MVP. These are 60 pound sandbags. And if you're gonna go shopping for sandbags, I would say these are the best in terms of stopping bullets because the canvas material that they're wrapped in, they just don't break open and you know, dump out all over the place like the other ones do. But obviously sandbags are really good at stopping bullets, which is probably why the military uses them. And what we're comparing these to is a bit of a curveball. So as you can see, this is an easy straw hay bale. And I actually had no intention whatsoever on comparing sandbags to hay bales today. I was gonna do sandbags versus cinder blocks, but when I went shopping, I came across these easy straw hay bales and I thought that would be an awesome thing to compare to our sandbag. So if the very first gun we shoot blows straight through all these hay bales, then we'll probably switch and go sandbag versus cinder block. But I'm really curious to see how effective these hay bales actually are at stopping bullets. Now, obviously a real hay bale that's, you know, 10 times the size would work a lot better, but it's not as portable and not as easy to find. And these things are packed extremely tight. So I think it might actually work. So if you're looking to fortify a bunker, sandbags versus hay bales, which one should you use? Let's find out. By the way, these sandbags come in two different versions and they look exactly the same. They have one that's full of actual sand, which is what we shot in the last video. And then they have one that's full of these tiny little rocks, which is what these are. So technically I've never shot these, but I just assume that the result will probably be pretty similar. And I definitely think that the sandbags are gonna beat the hay bales. But what these two things have in common is that when you shoot them, they can take multiple rounds and not just disintegrate or fall apart like cinder blocks would, which is why I'm comparing these. So we're gonna skip the 22 and go straight to the nine millimeter. We're shooting this one out of the Smith & Wesson MMP Shield Plus. Big thanks to Turtle Lake Tactical for sending this gun out. This is one of the best carry guns you can get, in my opinion, so. Big fan of this one. Let's see what the nine millimeter does. I got two sandbags up there to start with. Check it out. And there's our entrance hole from the nine millimeter. Go ahead and move this second sandbag. And you can see on the back, there's no exit hole. And if you look at the front, this is what I'm talking about. So you can put bullets straight into these things and nothing falls out. They don't fall apart. Uh, they last quite a while and can take quite a few rounds, which is why I like sandbags so much. And since we're comparing two different things, I'm not gonna shoot every single caliber that I got and make this video 30 minutes long. So we're gonna go straight to a big dog and shoot the 44 Magnum out of the Taurus Ultralight 44 Magnum revolver. Possibly the hardest kicking 44 Magnum you can get. This thing sucks to shoot, but let's see what the 44 Magnum does. Oh yeah. <laughs> this thing might be snappier than my 500 Magnum. It just flips so hard. And you can see our 44 Magnum right there. Quite a big difference from the nine millimeter. And I actually might like these better because literally nothing is coming out of these when you shoot them. Whereas the ones that are full of actual sand do leak a little bit. Not much, but definitely more than these do. Let's go ahead and pull this one off. And once again, you can see nothing came out of that first sandbag. I'm impressed. All right, I went ahead and added a third sandbag because we're gonna move on to the rifles now. So I actually decided not to bring the AR out today and went with the AK-74. I've been getting asked about this one in the comments, people wondering if I still have it. Of course I still have it. This is my favorite rifle. It's just harder to find ammo for it, so I don't shoot it as much. But this one is shooting the 545 by 39 very similar to the 556 that the AR-15 shoots, and in my experience, typically they penetrate about the same through this kind of stuff. So these results should be very similar to what the AR-15 would do if you're curious about that. And there's our tiny entrance hole from the AK-74. You can see just how small that is compared to those two handguns. That is a 22 caliber bullet. 
For those of you that didn't know, let's go ahead and move these out of the way. And once again, nothing came out of that first sandbag. That is extremely impressive. All right, next up, we're gonna shoot the 762 by 39 out of the AK-47. Let's see what this does. And our 762 by 39 went in right there above that number 27. You can see the 545 there next to it. Much bigger bullet hole. Let's go ahead and move our second sandbag. And once again, nothing even came out of that first sandbag. And that AK-47 has quite a bit more horsepower than the AK-74. I definitely expected that one to go through. Wow. And let's go ahead and try our 308 out of the Savage Axis 308 bolt action rifle. I'm gonna say this one has to go through one sandbag. This is, you know, a pretty good step up even from the 762 by 39. And so far, nothing has went through that first sandbag, which is not what I expected. So I'm gonna say the 308 will go into our second sandbag and probably stop there. Let's see. And there's our bullet hole from the 308. I went ahead and put that one all the way off to the right hand side. And for the moment of truth, let's go ahead, pull these back. Shut up. <laughs> Nothing came out the backside of that first sandbag. I gotta be honest, I'm blown away by this. I expected these sandbags to be good at stopping bullets, obviously, but never in a million years did I think a high powered 308 would stop in one six inch sandbag. Well, if you're getting sandbags, I would say look for the tube sand that has the tiny little pebbles in it because I think these are even better than the actual sandbags. That's amazing. So I was gonna try the shotgun on those sandbags, but if a 308 ain't going through them, the shotgun ain't gonna do nothing. So now we're moving on to the hay bales. And I gotta say, after seeing what those sandbags did, I have way less confidence in these hay bales, but we're gonna give it a shot. So I have all three of them stacked on the table, one in front of the other, and we're just gonna work our way up and see what they do. Once again, starting out with the nine millimeter out of the Smith & Wesson MMP Shield Plus. Start this one off to the right. All right, let's check it out together. There is the entrance hole from our nine millimeter. I really wish you guys could feel just how dense these things are. Obviously they're much lighter weight than our sandbags, but definitely packed about as tight as they could be. So let's see. So, <laughs> It definitely passed all the way through the first one, went into the second one. Please don't be an exit hole. Gosh, dang it. <laughs> Man, it went all the way into our third one, but did not come out of the third one. So <laughs> the very first bullet that we shot went all the way into our third hay bale. I don't think this is gonna do as well. Let's try the 44 Magnum. All right, 44 Magnum, exact same bullet that we shot at the sandbags. I predict this will blow straight through all three of those. Let's see. I think I saw a bunch of hay fly out the back. <laughs> There's our entrance hole from the 44 Magnum right there in the top of that Z. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go all the way to the back. <laughs> there it is, the 44 Magnum blew straight through all three of our hay bales. Dang it! Maybe I'll try laying them down so we have more to penetrate through, but as far as these versus the sandbags, that's a hard win for the sandbags, no doubt about it. So before we move on to the rifles, let's go ahead and try some double-op buckshot out of the 12 gauge shotgun. I think this will probably do quite a bit of damage, but I wanna see it. All right, so our double lot buckshot went in right there. You can see how tight that pattern stayed. Pretty much one big hole going into that first one. And <laughs> you can definitely see that every one of those pellets went into our second hay bale, but nothing came out of the second hay bale. So the third one is completely clean and that double lot buckshot stopped in our second hay bale. 
That's kind of interesting. So these obviously can stop bullets if you have enough of them, but in terms of stacking something up to fortify a bunker or something like that, you would just need too many of them. I think three or four deep, you know, laying them that way would be kind of unnecessary when you could have a couple rows of sandbags and be just fine. And the sandbags are like half the price of these easy straw hay bales. Now, if you had real hay bales, might be a different story, I don't know. But next up, let's go ahead and try the Superior AK out of the two, the 545 by 39 AK-74. That'll probably piss some people off. I think I saw stuff shoot out the back. <laughs> All right, you can barely see it, but our 545 by 39 went in right there on that black part of that E, and we'll just go ahead and get right to it. There it is. <laughs> you can see on the back of our third hay bale, even with them laying sideways like this, the very first rifle that we shot blew all the way through all three of them. So I gotta be honest, I'm kind of disappointed in the hay bales. I figured they wouldn't be as good as the sandbags at stopping bullets, but I really had high hopes for these things and I was hoping to discover a new, you know, bulletproof barrier. But hay bales definitely are not it. Unless you go and get the big 10 foot ones that you see out in the country, we have those all over the place out here. Um, but again, those things are humongous. And in that situation, you might as well just get a bunch of railroad ties and stack those up because if you could fill the cracks on these railroad ties, like mortar them or something like that, I would put these up against anything. Railroad ties are extremely bulletproof and you know they do really well at stopping bullets. But man, those sandbags impressed me big time and did even better than I thought they would. And when we get the 50, we're shooting these sandbags. All right, everybody, there you have it. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Like I said, I'm surprised. I thought the sand would do well, but I never thought that it would do as well as it did. I bought four of these sandbags and we literally didn't even get through one. It's just amazing. So if you want some of these sandbags, these are the Quickcrete Tube Sand 60 pound bags. And if you see these, just feel them and make sure that it's the, you know, the tiny little rocks. You can definitely tell instead of the sand. Although the sand works really well too, but I think the ones that have the little rocks in them are probably even better. I mean, that's just amazing that even a 308 didn't make it through one of these sandbags. So there you have it, sandbags versus hay bales. Big win for the sandbags, not even close. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please let me know down in the comments below. As always, hit that like button for me, guys. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.